<laughs> I think we're good. <clears throat> Where did we go? <clears throat> hmm. Okay, I believe we're live. <laughs> uh, here we go. Um, it is Thursday night. It is the only time to share the show with with Paul Wyrostek. We are here at Forever After That. Um, I'm settling my nerves in. Paul's getting something moving. <laughs> Let's see how things can go. We're, we're working up. We love blooper reels around here, so hang with me. Okay. I'm looking for myself. If anyone pops on, let me know everything's going good. I need to see some things. Oh, yes, we're going well. Okay. Well, happy forever after that. <laughs> this is our right. second week. This is so excited to be here this week. This this is like a gift to me. Um, we have been friends for what? It's been three over three years now. And yeah. what I am so blessed to have you in my world. I'm so thankful the day that Steve brought you to me, and he literally brought you to me in three different ways it was incredible the way that he absolutely grabbed my hand and yanked me in your direction and everything changed it was um man i was just a mess after losing him and so i'm so thankful and grateful to you for healing sessions for um really truly waking me up to who i really am and what a blessing to have somebody like that in in my world so thank you for that if you want to you're welcome and i it is, it's a blessing to be able to uh, watch how spirit works in that way and how, how unique it, each experience is of how spirit can bring people to healing. So it's, we've been on a journey. It's, it's been a pleasure for sure. Yeah, it's, it's really funny as, you know, we, we started out in such a, when he brought me in, I was like, I don't even know what energy healing is. I have no idea what any of this is. And yet, I don't feel like I really had a choice. I was just in such dire straits at that point. And so, um, man, just really, I didn't want to be alive. And so he brought me back through healing sessions with you. And, and it's funny that I've watched so many parallels between the two of us so many times that we've gone through some really difficult times. And then working too on this book made such a huge difference. I'm so blessed by um, being able to partner with you in a book and and still, still, when I read that book, I feel that energy coming through. And um, I do, you know, I just, I feel like it's been such a gift. So um, why don't you tell, why don't we start a little bit? I don't even know, like when we first started, it was, it was trying to figure out, I remember, my man, what, am, what is this all about? And why are we being pulled together? And um, man, there was a lot of confusion. And it seems as if over time, it took us both a long time to figure it all out. But, um, you know, kind of go through... You, you take the stage, do some talking. Yeah, well, you know, that whole, I still feel that that book is still at its beginning stages because, uh, you know, it, <clears throat> it, it's a collaboration. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's made, it was made when it was made because my teachings, your writing, your, your own experiences as well. And then you know, with Caleb's uh, photography in it, it's just an, it was, it's an awesome t stamp in time, you know, of, mm -hmm. of like, you know, it was definitely a very pivotal period and, and things just took off from there. But I still feel that that book is just the beginning, you know, at its beginning stage, it's of getting out there. It's almost like just, you know, or to a lot more people that is just, you know, waiting for that gate to open. And that's just like a water slide. It's just going to go. And, uh, but, you know, to go from the energy that we experienced then to how the world is now is just like, you know, no one can see this coming, you know, as far as the, the, the magnitude of it. So to see, you know, how far, everything's come since then 
it's just like looking back and like, you know, we're in a different world right now than we were then, mm-hmm. you know? So it's all the, how that book also, how it would translate nowadays, right? Would be different to how it translates back then. So it's gonna, it's gonna all fit right in, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I always felt like that. It was like, this book is like when, when we first, I remember holding it in my hands the first time and it was like, and it's going to be backwards here. Cause I think I'm still backwards, but it is anchor light. But, um, the first time we got that first time in our hands, I was like, this book is just alive and it's not time for it yet. It's like in its infancy stage. And now with everything that's been coming about, I find myself, going, I find myself looking at it and reading different chapters and it reads differently to me than it did then. And part of that is our energy, your energy, my energy, the energy that went into this book is also evolving. I know that I've evolved and all of us, man, we're going through just a huge growth spurt. Humanity in general and those of us who are light workers are, are expanding and just leaps and bounds right now. And so the energy that's coming through these pages is evolving also. So it feels to me, I remember telling you that this is, um, this book feels very alive and it's, and it just continues to evolve. And so, um, you know, I hope people have, that have already read it <clears throat> maybe, or have, you know, have already experienced it will continue to pick it up because it's, it's not the words in the book. It's the energy in the book that changes. Yeah. Us that changes because the energy, the word, the teachings are channeled, right? Right. So this is teachings of light, of truth, of source. So whenever just speaking about it, <clears throat> people are receiving healing from it because it's a frequency. So it's that book is always charged. Those words are always charged with the healing frequency. So it's that that book actually heals mm-hmm. right so you know it's i channeled the teachings you channeled the writing of it and you with your experiences and so it was like we held the space for mm-hmm. you know that to come in you know to to that book so and you know if you can see what's going on right now compared to what was going on back then. Like if, if anything is more, you know, a good beginning uh, or a re- remembering of, you know, getting your roots or you're anchored in is, you know, now with what's going on in the world would be a good time for that, you know, more than ever mm-hmm. that book because the information in it is, you know, we're going through a really hard time. This isn't, you know, this isn't just something that popped up in the world and was just this little hiccup. I think that this is just the beginning of a long road of changes. This third dimension to the fifth dimension thing. I mean, this isn't just going to happen overnight, right? It just became physical worldwide. There was a lot of individual people waking up, shifting from the third to the fifth. But we had to all light up, as I've said many times. I was doing healing sessions over the years. I started noticing a pattern. Mm -hmm. You know, to me, that was just the human. To me, that's all of the mystery and Sherlock Holmes and seeing patterns and numbers and i saw wait a minute universal oneness is using me to light these people's beacons Mm -hmm. out of noticing this pattern and then i started noticing how it was going through all different countries Mm -hmm. okay and i'm like that's when i realized i'm lighting up beacons here Mm -hmm. i thought what's going to happen when there's enough beacons lit. And now I look around today and I'm like, I have my answer. That's right. So people like you with your writing, other empaths, other channelers, readers, <clears throat> astrologists, even, you know, anybody like that, they are the beacons mm-hmm. as well. So there was enough of us here 
was somebody to flick the big switch and the healing grid is on. Mm -hmm. And now it's worldwide. Because of the World Wide Web, we were able to get to all the light workers were able to connect, join hands around the world. And enough of us ran into each other. And, you know, all of a sudden people just hear my videos out of nowhere. And, you know, I get to hear all the cool stories during one on one sessions of how I how crazy it was that my video just popped up. And that's what how they knew right away to have a session. You know, so where autumn light, <clears throat> it's like gravity. Gravity attracts heaviness, gravity attracts light too. So it's like, just like the formations of the planets and the solar systems, it's like we all come together like a web. That's how it happens in space, it's a web. So we get together, all of, of us light workers, now it's around the world. <laughs> Excuse me. And now we poke the bee's nest. Mm -hmm. And then you have all the astrology with that. So now it's like wait, waking a sleeping giant is kind of what we did. Yeah. But it was meant to happen because there's, you know, I was thinking of this today, walking into the market or wherever I was. I just thought of this. It was like, you know, a lot of people want it to be easy. They, they think healing means make it go away. And a lot of times, yeah, we, it does go away. But a lot of it we have to walk through. Because mm -hmm. in order for us to grow, we have to heal from our traumas. There's a lot of that. There's a lot of people in the world right now that just want it to go away. They don't want to walk through the through their own growth. And I think that's what the world is going through. Mm -hmm. These unawakened people, that ego is just flaring up. Ego is going crazy. Uh, you know, it's for the people that are not awake because the people that are awake can actually, they can see the silver lining they know what's going on on the other side. They know there's a shift in consciousness. Right. It's the people that aren't awake that source has to get to in order to walk through this, you know, this healing, this, or this co collective consciousness uh, switch. Mm -hmm. So all these net, all these old systems now that were put in place have to be ripped out like crabgrass or um, I explain it like Velcro. And there's a lot of times there's no pretty way for that to happen. Um, growing pains, you know, yeah. tough love. So it's like the universe, universal oneness and the world, it's tough love. But what we need to do as light workers or empaths is hold our own through this. Hold our own stuff together. Stay anchored, stay grounded. Do your it's work. Stay in your higher frequencies. We're going through individually massive transitions more than ever before through this shift. So the internal struggle is just as much as the external struggle. And, you know, when I see everything that's going on in the world, I'm not trying to figure it out. It's, I'm not letting it wrap me up the best I can either, you know, like tumble me around in the waves. <clears throat> what my focus is here is to help as many people just to hold their light, to find their light to release the blocks, the cords, the attachments, these all these things that are flying up to, to help individual people that are looking for healing, right? right? You know, that's that's how I see what I'm here for on this earth right now. It's I'm here to help out specific people just like you are and other light workers. And We're I'm gonna just keep, 
what's going on out there. Monitor it, but just stay in my, you know, my fifth dimensional space. You know what I mean? Yeah, let me like let me come back in that too because you were talking about um going through these growing pains and these things like many of us in life you especially me we've, we've gone through some very difficult um growing up experiences and then you know these relationship things we've been through very very painful events can you hear me okay um yeah okay um so let me the question is because <laughs> i've got i've had steve playing with my hair for a while i'm like okay stop playing with my hair um he wants the, the message that I feel like he really wants to make clear to us tonight is that they don't stop. These people were losing a lot of people. A lot of people are, are leaving the earth plane right now. We know that for sure with all of this virus that are, they're leaving, but that doesn't mean that they're quitting. Like he makes it clear often to or light workers, this side of the plane, that side of the plane, wherever they're still working. And so how do you feel about that? Do you feel like, like this mass exodus, so many people are passing and they're leaving behind all of those belief systems and all those things that are holding him down. I know with him, he got a whole lot smarter when he, <laughs> when he, after he passed. The, the one, the Steve that I know now is so much different than the Steve that I was married to. And he is still very much makes it clear to me that he's still very much working. They don't, we don't just go die and go lay down and take a nap. Like they're still very much at work. So do you feel like this whole event right now is actually releasing these souls into uh, a space where they're up with this huge shift that's going on right now. Yeah, it's pretty much the same, the same thing. So <clears throat> when we die, we pretty much are just <clears throat> continuing on our spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and we're still working. Well, our own, our individual soul growth within an individual group soul group so you know whether we're you know we're here learning that we that we jump to the other side and we, we our growth changes uh at the same time so does the person that was left behind and then there's these moments almost like deja vu moments to where the information is passed between each other mm -hmm. and then then there's the you know you level up you know it's like you you grew you evolve spiritually so a lot of these people that are that have died is you know i see them as volunteers so these are these are souls that already this was already planned you know before they even came in because mm -hmm. think of what this think think of what this is these are these are beings of light that are crossing over because of this thing. And because of this is why the world is changing, right? Is under this big change to where the, all these dark systems out there are breaking down. You know, the third dimensional lack, the control, the, you know, all that low stuff. So, you know, who are of light? Because they're passing is what is stimulating the biggest shift in that human has ever had in recorded human history. Who are these beings, right? So mm -hmm. they're, they're like angels, you know, something like that. Um, because we have free will and free choice. We don't just randomly incarnate. You know, we, creations of where things could kind of go, not really wrong, but you know, there's some leeway, you know, we're in the wild here. So things right. can happen, but our path shifts. And, but we chose to come here. We chose our parents um, and we extended out these physical bodies, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, it's, uh, I think they are very angelic beings that, and and that's that's pretty much in a nutshell what I feel about all the people that are passing. Now there's the suicides. The suicide energy is incredible, mm -hmm. yeah. really intense, really deep, and that's from the unawakened people that um, can't handle the shift. 
they don't know what's going on. All they know is through the lenses of, you know, a third dimensional human. And a lot of these people are manipulated too by negative energy. <clears throat> they've also had it up to here with everything that they've experienced in their life. So it doesn't take much to tip the scale. But in the case of universal oneness, they're, they're taken care of on the other side just as much as, you know, the, the beings of light that, mm -hmm. you know, chose to come in to, to stimulate this shift. So that's, that's how I feel about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, um, I feel like we're just being called that there's this, this is what we all came here for we're in this space. of yes, we volunteered to do this. So did those that are dying from this virus. We've all, all of us, when we come to the planet, there's so many that have volunteered to come here and be and stay in this. I know, um, a few years ago, and right after Steve died, one of the first messages that he gave me was, if you could only see how beautiful life is going to become, you would understand why I had to step aside. And I believe that we're in that energy now. That's why it's so exciting to me, because it feels like we have waited for this. And, and I'm like a child at Christmas. I'm like, wow, you know what, it's finally time. We're manifesting more quickly than we've ever manifested before. All of that hard work that we've been doing, all that loss to build ourselves up to become what you know what this is this new energy that we're coming into we're just getting we're just scraping the edge like we're just barely touching the edge of the iceberg right now and i i'm excited i'm so grateful to him for allowing me to be the one because <laughs> i feel like that was you know that was something that he gave me as a gift to be here in this time and space and so no matter how difficult it is i'm just thankful every day oh goodness i love being alive right now because i this don't yeah. you get that i like it's like it's We've been waiting for <clears throat> well this is the if there's a time to be alive it's right now you know well <clears throat> i can think of better things that we could be experiencing to have a but you know it's we're we're part of the biggest shift in human history recorded history so what does that say about empaths and light workers right we would as bad as it is um on, on the outside, it's, you know, it's to be part of the biggest shift that's ever taken place. And for our, our own individual ascension, awakening, enlightenment, that we can find bliss, excitement, happiness. I love bliss. Yeah. Spurring this greatest shift the earth has ever seen planet you know so there's a lot going on there's a lot going on. and it's not easy for a lot of people a lot of people are going through really really heavy experiences right now um you know really challenging being being held locked down by you know zone for so long mm -hmm. you know it that's why i feel that this is just the beginning you know but we can live we can experience bliss while out there is the movie mm -hmm. is just a movie right watching the movie you know that everything that's going on out there yeah um you know, we can see w what the other side is going to look like of the tunnel. And so we're able to hold the course, right? Hold steady. Mm -hmm. And also, now that I'm thinking about it, there's a lot of um, extraterrestrial energy. I thought you were going to uh, say that. <laughs> I love that because I've been feeling it. Yeah, too. yeah it's very... Uh, close mm -hmm. they're extremely yeah. telepathic and you know i think that's part of the whole awakening too is mm -hmm. it's like we're sending out a signal mm -hmm. and everything's connected out there by a web and a web of energy dark energy dark matter of uh, solar systems you name it 
this gravity, this magnetism, and we're all connected. So something go, something's going on with Earth. Saturn's going to know about it. Other so if there's anything going on with our solar system, everybody's going to know about it in other solar systems. And so the squeaky wheel gets the grease. And I feel like they're kind of happy though. They must be. They must be like, okay, maybe they're not going to destroy the planet after all. Maybe <laughs> they're going to. That these people are waking up. <clears throat> That's my sense is there's a, an excitement like that we're coming back together like we can maybe we'll be advanced enough one of these days soon that we can actually accept the idea that there's really extraterrestrial that we're not the only planet in existence, you know. Yeah, I mean I don't know anybody that can looks at you know a NASA thing on YouTube and if you really sit there for 15 minutes and you see how many solar systems are out there. It's like, you you can't wrap your head around it. And, you know, to think that it's just us is just absolutely silly. I know it. But there and is the act yeah, out there to pick it up. It. Yeah. Yeah. Can we, can we evolve to the place where we can trust the fact that there are extraterrestrial energies out there that are here to help us and not all the movies are you know they're coming in to just kill us all off to take over the planet to to do all that there's so much silliness out there and so can we come to a place where we can finally evolve to the point where we can understand that we are not in this all by ourselves that includes you know right. angel guides and all of this it's it's a waking up experience of wait a minute i'm more than i thought i was um, there's more to this than I ever thought possible. It's, it's right. very difficult for us, those of us that can see the bigger picture to be on a planet. I walk downtown and I'm like, these people, they're just not, they don't understand. They can't see past, you know, tomorrow or um, the next gallon of milk or whatever it is that they're concerned about. They can't see. And I'm like, oh my gosh, if you guys could just open your eyes and see. And so I really, for me, I'm like, I'm thankful to be able to be in a space right now to be here now as a light worker and feel like maybe, you know, those of us that are doing this, we're actually making a difference. And then I see that too. The more that we start to wake up people, the more they seek us out and they want to know, learn more about this and these, their little lights are going. It's like, they're just, you know, you're walking through a crowd and, and they're just resonating. You know, it's like we're in this space of suddenly where people are just, they're just being, their lights are going on. And it's an exciting time to be alive, just just to be here to breathe, you know. I just want to yes. be here to see the actual final effects of all of it. I hope that we can live long enough to see all of it. Well, even we will live. We'll still be around. We just may not be in this physical form. But I really want to see the results of all this work that all of us are doing. See how much is changing. Right. See the result of it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, we're seeing the result, but... uh you know, to see the harmony of the result. Because remember places that I come from or have been to where, you know, it's, it's you know, it's what you'd read about in a, with Atlantis, you know, to where there's the, the spectrum of colors is way more than our spectrum now. You could, you could telepathically communicate with the trees and the, you know, I mean, it's just, absolute paradise no bickering no judgment no you know so when when you can know what that place truly feels like and then you come to the earth the first thing is that unbelievable disappointment or worse than it was more of a trauma to realize where i woke up and yeah. i could not believe that this planet was in shambles mm -hmm some of my earliest memories and then now i look back and it's like okay we're here to make this one like the other one yeah right that's unconditional love right there because then we get here and we're like who the hell would choose to do this you know <laughs> yeah and so now we're doing it and yeah there's there is you know, there's people that are not going to wake up in this lifetime. There's millions upon millions upon millions, maybe billions of people that are not going to wake up in this lifetime. And they're not meant to. Right. And they're going to go out 
with a bang. You know, they're going to ride it out. They're going to overcompensate. They're going to over-exaggerate. Um, but that's all, all part of the change, right? The great shift that we're all going through. And there are, just like everything else, there are negative extraterrestrial energies. Mm -hmm. Right. So there has to be, right? There's no such thing. As, there's no such thing as something as quantum as that to not have, you know, polar opposites. They wouldn't even be able to travel the way they do if there wasn't that. Mm -hmm. So, so, uh, but that is what that is what's part of the big shift because light will win. Period. Because nothing can beat light. Nothing. So, but it's kind of like how much upheaval is there going to be for, you know, for that to take place? It's, it's that teetering point that I think we're going through. It's like skiing on the t a ridge of a mountain range, you know, mm -hmm. and just holding that. But uh, there's people that are waking up to this more than ever. So all of the UFO extraterrestrial stuff, um, the spiritual activity is also off the charts right now as we're speaking. So we're talking, you know, veils dropped, not just between us and the astral plane, but us and interdimensional, inter interdimensionally. So, but that's what this is all about. It's, so there is going to be, you know, is there are negative aspects of extraterrestrials. There are also very neutral beings too that will go either way, depending on what choice you make. There are, there are um, you know, part of this manipulation to the earth was from a uh, reptile type of extraterrestrials. These are very low frequency extraterrestrials. And that's part of this whole lack matrix, everything that we're in, this kind of a program that's kind of faulty, that's kind of, it, it wants to just eat, devour itself. This is not, you know, this is not a, a program to flourish. Mm -hmm. There's too much control, there's too much greed, there's too much manipulation. So, but that's where all of the fifth dimensional beings, right? These are beings that are not physical. Okay. You'll see them as form, just like how if when you're in a dream, you think you're in a physical body. You don't know that you're not in a physical body, right? right. And the people that you're seeing, you're not even thinking, are they real? You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, it's relative, right? So, but these beings of light hold frequency, hold light. And there's much more of them because that's what this is what the whole movement that we're going through is about. It's about extracting the manipulation. It's about pulling out like crabgrass. It's like pulling out at its roots to what is really going on here. And that's why I think that, you know, it, it is going to be bumpy, but people can find that there is uh, this light is truth. So all you have to do is keep facing towards light, no matter how dark it gets. Sometimes if you're getting so pulled down that you can't get yourself out of it, sometimes, you know, just ride the ride or get help first, um, you know, to be help and have guidance through it. That'll help tremendously. And let yourself, let yourself there at times you know a day or two it'll pass if it continues on then there's something wrong but uh i say that all know. the time you gotta feel it yeah feel it. Well, if you're just hiding from it you're not feeling and we're really being called to feel it like this stuff that we've had bottled up for such a long time you, you think oh i've already i've already healed all that i'm in good shape and then all of a sudden bing something triggers us we get these people that trigger us and it's like nope here we go again but we can't keep it. So we just keep getting it and popping back up so that we can take care of it. And once we do, it's like, okay, go time again. I'm better. I'm, I'm gaining my That's ability. it. 
understanding. Right. So yeah, good point. Mm -hmm. That's the difference is, you know, the stuff keeps happening and it, and it will mm -hmm. be on earth. And it's the squeaky wheel. It's the, it's the flat tire, you know, and we're, we're here to shift to that. But like you said, you know, we're, 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 we're here to experience what humans experience, not only own personal growth, but to understand how humans, how humanity thinks, right? How it reacts. Um, bumpy ride, but like you said, you come out of each experience and then, wow, the growth is just so huge that it, it fuels you mm -hmm. so much that it's like, before you jumped into the body, it fuels you so much. You're like, oh yeah, I can handle that. That's no problem, you know? And then the, the, the next trauma or not trauma, but the next trigger happens and, you know, then we're down in the dumps again. But, uh, you know, we, we keep coming back strong and, you know, more and more, I think each one of us are, you know, and that's another thing that we're going through. We're going through those ups and downs back to back sometimes, you know, for a long time. So it feels like we're just not getting a break. But uh a little alien shadow. Let's yeah, I was see. watching that. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching that earlier. It was distracting me. Hey. Uh, yeah, I feel like that. And I also feel like that the more that we're willing to do this work, like I've been through, you know my story. The last couple of years I've had trigger after trigger after trigger. I've been I put myself in a situation where I was going to get triggered really well, really often and and so right. i've gone through a lot and so now i'm in this space of well i get triggers but it's a little bitty trigger it's just a little bitty thing and i can take care of it pretty easily and what happens yeah. more because i've worked so hard at this and i've i've you know really gone through the dredges i feel like for the first time in my life that i can put my roots down on this planet i was born feeling like an outsider like you it was this alien energy of feeling like i just don't belong here you know, this isn't, I never fit in with anyone. I always felt like I was on a different wavelength than, than everyone else around me. So for me now to be in a place where I feel like I can literally just put down my roots and feel like I'm at home is incredible. And that's where we're coming to. We get to that place of ease. Like finally, the work is done. You can take it easy for a while and it feels so good. So I, can, I can't encourage people enough to just don't run from it. You know, you can't keep running and stuffing that stuff down anymore. We really have to face it and get get to it. And we're all here in this together. There's such a huge tribe of people. We're all so connected. And so this is why we're all here. We, you know, we didn't come down as one person to do all this work. There's so many of us now. And so I'm finding that it seems like the more that I need it, the more people are around to, to kind of, you know, we help each other, pick each other up. And, and um, you know, it's just incredible that we're able to do that for each other. This This whole plan, you can see it coming together. This is the way it was meant to be. And it's like a big old puzzle. It's, it's just falling into place. So, yeah, I don't know. How do you feel about that? I know you've always said that too, that you don't really feel at home. Are you starting to feel more at home on the planet? Yeah, I, uh, that went away a while ago because when you connect to source, when you're connected to higher self or when, you know, that's why I'm, I'm blessed with, having all the one-on-one -on -one clients that I have because it, if it just boiled down to me meditating in order to connect, I don't think I'd meditate as much as I channel for clients each week, right? right? So I wouldn't get this keep dipping into the light, right? Each hour long session, each time I'm doing group healing, I'm tapping in. Each time you come out of that, you take it with you. So by dipping into the light so much, <clears throat> higher self, your, your purpose is awakened within you. Mm -hmm. And your, so what happens is you still may, you know, feel that, you know, 
I'm not like this big, like, like the 3D humans are aliens, you know? It's like, I, I, you know, I would have to act around, you know, unawakened people. You know, if there was enough of them, it'd be like, you know, it, it, it would have to be like blend in because you're going to look like a freak. You know what I mean? So by a, by being able to tap into universal oneness and your true path, that's when you can, and I help a lot of people with that through my sessions too. It's, it's always a thing that comes up regularly that these people come here, they're not all the way in their body, not only from traumas that they experienced and all that and block attachments and all that fun stuff, but yeah. they've, they've mentally jumped out of their body to, you know, to escape. So through their healing process, it's, no, it's okay. Come back to the body. It's okay to be on this planet. It's okay to have fun. Mm -hmm. To and, well, and fun. <laughs> belong. People need to have more fun. Yeah, that's all I get lately. Whenever and you know, that's what I work with. That's what people know. Uh, come to the playground. That's the other show that I do on this network because it's all about to me. I know when I started working with you first, it was. Um, First, it was healing, obviously. Then it was self-love. I had to really, really work hard on that one because that was one that I was no good at. And then it was, okay, let me get, I started working with the inner child. And so now that's, that's what I do. And the whole idea is, is that inner child is so powerful. You know, that's where the imagination comes from. That's where, you know, you're, that's a powerhouse in there. And so many people ignore that. They ignore that playtime, the time to get back in and really get to know that little person that little because when you came here you were this perfect little being of light you know and and through life we've been beaten on and told things that aren't true and all these difficult times we've gone through and that little one just goes into hiding and, and no longer wants to play because it's too afraid to come out and so now I feel like really source has been giving that to me it's like oh no you're going to work with people and you're going to start helping their little children to come back out and play. And I've noticed I've been doing these daily for about two months. And the more we do it, the more powerful I feel these, these people that join me, their little children come into the room and I'm like, Oh gosh, you guys are getting really, really powerful little creators. You know, we're coming back to that, that um, sense that we truly are a part of all of this creation and that we are creators and we have that creator energy inside of us. And we get to build from that and, and we get to do it by having fun, you know, like stop. You, I remember you and I did that, that chapter in the book. It was all, you, you said something about, um, what was it? The little tickle and then <laughs> that you, you went through and then it just kept getting worse to the point where you could hardly stand it because it was, um, universal oneness was telling you to lighten up, you know, if this is only life, you know, stop taking it so seriously. You're playing a role here. Stop taking and go out and have fun. God say, go out right. and play fun a little bit, have some fun. Yeah. And I mean, that's, you know, people, when I, when I'm always teaching about having fun, it's for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. It's, uh, you know, but it's kind of like, you know, if, if you were to be like God, like you get to ask God a question and you ask God, what's the, what do I need to do? You know, like what, you know, the big, you know, God answer, right? How do you live? What's the best way to live? You know, by God saying, have as much fun as you possibly can. A lot of people might even be disappointed with that answer, right? Because they would want something that's so much more, you know, godly. But the reason why I teach that is because that is originally, that is the energy of God itself, of creator energy is that energy of like to where you're just beaming with excitement that beaming of excitement goes supernova mm -hmm. out in space so you know and when you suppress that that's where everything goes bad that's where a lot is blocked too now and not just the inner child either because it's that inner child isn't doesn't go away or isn't necessarily lost it because that inner child is is 
the adult, mm-hmm. right? Oh, well, just didn't bring problem. that, just didn't bring that part of it with them. Yeah. Up to now. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, my only problem in life is not being able to play enough. Because yeah. to me, this place, you know, it's a playground, you know, um, there's through all the healing that I've experienced, you know, on my own journey, that inner kid is right here, 100%, but in an adult body with the wisdom and the knowledge, right? So it's a balance of it all. It's not the only time there's an inner child is when there's a disconnection from that innocence, from that excitement of creation. So Ascended Masters, they're always, always about lighting up. Um, but having fun is really important. Mm-hmm. Main reason why I teach it is because what you're doing is you're literally letting in God energy, source. Mm-hmm. Right. But you are changing your frequency dramatically. You're dipping into universal oneness, right? Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of people are asking me, how do I ground, you know, and they're visualizing light and all this and stuff and, and, uh, or, you know, anchors, roots coming out of the feet and that's all great. But I'm thinking, how do I ground? I ground on fishing. Yeah. Go get in the dirt. Hiking. Yeah. Ground by doing, and, and the list is every, every fun thing that I like to do. Wow, it's interesting to have fun, especially now in these times. That is the way to shift this planet right now. You don't have to do great spiritual things. You don't have to have 100,000 people following you. You don't have to, you know, pull a rabbit out of a hat. Hold your light Mm -hmm. and and play. It's, it's It's literally the most powerful thing we could do right now. It's also just the way that you talk about it too. It's like, let, let go of control. You don't need to hold on so tight. You don't need to hold on. <laughs> you can just like, you're, you're, you're going to be okay. If you let go of that, that life rope, you know, you don't. And I had to learn that one the hard way. Cause I was, I'm good at trying to control the way my life goes. And when I stopped trying to control it and literally I stopped trying to control it three months ago. I mean, I'm like as old as I am. It's taken me a long time to say, you know what? I don't even got to do this anymore. Why am I trying so hard to control it? Because it gets so much better when I let go. And I just was like, you know, forget it. I'm not even trying anymore. <laughs> I'm just walking out right. of my, that part of me. And then everything just started flowing the way that it was supposed to. So it's like, stop trying so hard. <laughs> we work so hard at trying to make this perfect and trying to uh. be perfect. I think often. As light workers, we think somehow we got to hold this. We can't, you know, don't you say any naughty words and don't you be, you know, human. Don't you do those human things. And the truth is, is we're still, we came here to be human. We might be light workers inside of these bodies, but we're still very much human. And we have the gift of being physical and, and enjoying being physical. That's the gift of it all is that why we just wanted to be you know, these light creatures, we could have stayed where we were. We came here because we wanted to experience all this and how much fun is it, you know, and we just let go and just let it happen. Yeah. That's why this planet was originally created was because source, which separated into billions of sources Mm -hmm. to play, wanted, wanted to, had already experienced they, they did, there wasn't physical form, so they already experienced orchestra, created orchestras of light. Light shows beyond your wildest dreams. Um, so much so, that's why source separate, God separated itself to say, was so excited, it, it wanted another him or it or she, right, to do what I just did, create your own. Exactly. And then they got to share what they created. This is how music and, and, and uh, cinema stuff, you know, actors, because it was creating for each other, for themselves, but each other 
doing it. So then they created more and more, all in the light of source. This, so this, the very, so when I'm teaching people, have fun, they have no idea what I'm talking about, the depths of it. This is the spark of creation. Mm -hmm. So what next? As God keeps separating itself into billions and trillions of its own, there's nothing less. They're, they're pure, or every piece is source that is universal oneness. It's quantum. It's each, well, each own individual God, like you and me, started creating. Then they wanted to create, they wanted to play. Okay, let's create form now. Well, then they created form solar systems right they created this they're so happy that they created this they wanted it but you know, what would a little kid do hey let's ride that thing right let's jump on that rock in a physical form and let's experience light source at a physical level in the physical body and let's make ourselves forget yeah right <laughs> this is fun. how it all trickled down and then it went to but where it all where the downfall went was now you have all these individual gods if you will creating from source from the light of source then what happened is they started not creating out of the light of source the source they started creating with their own light Okay, still not bad, but we already have a disconnection from source. And eventually they disconnected from their own light and started creating from their own wants, needs, and desires, right? And that's how it dropped into ego. Then it, then it, now it's creating for all the wrong reasons, control, power. And then you had energies negative extraterrestrials, all this stuff, by that time, uh, jump on the self-manipulated ecosystem, right? So, yeah, that's, that's what I have to say about having fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it pretty much covered it, because that's the truth. You know, I think that we don't see the big picture. We just think, we get so wrapped up in just being this person that we forget that we're so many layers. You know, like you talk about often the layers of the onion, and there's so many parts of us and so many different, how you, it would take us all night to go into all of that. And, and um, so that if we could just, I remember, and I've been saying this all day, it keeps, keeps whispering in my ear, one message that I keep hearing over and over again, if people could just remember who they really are, oh my gosh, what would it, you know, that's all it takes is if people could just remember that connection, that piece of that spark of God that's in each one of us or whatever, whatever creator name you'd like to use is it, if you could just remember and remember that we're all from that same source. You know, you can look at these other people and you can think, wow, you know, they're really messed up. I do that. We all do that. We got, we walk through life and we judge one another. We think, man, less of a certain person or whatever. And believe it or not, we're all, you walk down the street and you see that homeless person and that's you, you know, that's just another version of me living out there, whatever creation they're making. And so I think now we're in this space of remembering the truth of who we are and more and more waking up to that. And that's, that's where this big time out has been useful, I think. You know, I see that uh, happening a lot more. I see people are more open to energy healing, to the metaphysical side of things. It's, it's beginning to, we're coming out of the closet. <laughs> it's like, you can come out now, it's safe. People are actually- Yeah, excited. it is. It's really awesome. And the awakening has just begun. Yeah. You know, we're only at a very small percentage of people that are awake or awakened, uh, never mind. And now you know there's many different levels of awakening. So, you know, a lot of my clients will say, will be, you know, 30, 40, 50, 60 years old. Mm -hmm. And they're going, you know, almost like, why didn't I find you 50, 40 years ago, you know? to where they, are, they weren't just awakening. 
They've been awake. They just didn't have any anyone that they that resonated or that act that actually understood what they're what they or had an explanation, you know, of what they're going through. So that's interesting too. So there's been a lot of people that have been awake for a long time, but just needed somebody to, to talk to to sort it out. Mm -hmm. okay. It's not you could think that's maybe one percent of the amount of people that are just waking up right now. Because I'm also having a lot of new clients that some of them never had healing sessions before, never experienced a healing session. I'm like, oh shit, we well, are in for a now <laughs> because this is the most powerful healing it's source that you can get on that that's available on the planet. So um but they got that look in their eye, you know what I mean? Oh, and once look. they get in their eye, they that's it. They're they're on their path, you know. They mm -hmm. and as soon as you wake up to the point to where you're aware there's something out there, mm -hmm. that's when there's an activation and you'll start meeting people. Synchronicities will start happening. You know, your your timeline will align with somebody else's, and then you then you you know, all of a sudden different spiritual teachers pop up. Um, and the imagination, you know, I think we what, we have a few minutes. Yeah, just a few uh, minutes. I want you to be able to the, get your The imagination that you mentioned was very important. Mm -hmm. So why it's also important to play is because it's about breaking that imagination, getting the cobwebs out of that imagination. Because and that's why a lot of spiritual people grew up with such trauma and lack and didn't have much of anything. Because what that does is that when you don't have much of anything, all you have is your imagination and your imagination goes boom, yeah. goes super. Okay, that's what I feel that happened with me. So my imagination is the biggest part of my brain, my thinking, okay? So, and the, the reason why the imagination, and that's why it get creative, whether it's music, whatever, it can, whatever anybody can do to stimulate the use of imagination, because that's where source, higher self, channeling all comes through. That dusty, cobwebby, big, open gateway. Mm -hmm. Consciousness is always busy. Our subconscious is busy. Our imagination. That's why when people... Mm -hmm when people are awakening and they, they think they see spirits and they're like, I don't know, am I just imagining that? You know, there's that, that's why, because it's coming yeah, through the same like that. Oh. <laughs> Yep. So. Incredible work. And so I want to, we, we're almost out of time. I want to make sure that people can contact you. Um, I know you've got your website and if that's still up and running, it's just paulyrostek.com. Am I correct yep. with that? Okay, and they can that's right. You contact you is there yeah, any other the, yeah and all my contact information is on there um my mm -hmm. work phone is 401-429-3703 um you can message me messengers most people have messenger i find messenger is the biggest way people get a hold of me you can just type my name in and uh send me a friend request um and yeah and the website has has all my information you know and uh if you type in my name and get on YouTube and subscribe uh, to there as well, because, or, you know, follow me on Facebook. If you, if people aren't following me already, because I do a lot of group healings, I do a, put out a lot of videos. So you can either subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and I promise that to those of you who have not experienced um, a session with Paul Rostick, you're going to be, uh, very pleasantly surprised. You, you will find healing like you've never found before. And I want to thank you so much for being a part of my life and for helping me to get onto my journey because you definitely made a big difference in my life. And I hope that everyone that's, I've, I've seen a lot of commenting going on. We're going to have to go back and catch up on that later on. This has been quite a live audience and it's been a lot of fun, fun to watch that. So much fun to talk to you again. And it is time for us to pop off. So thank you so much for joining me, Paul. Thank you. It was a pleasure for me and the alien being. 
And uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure, Diane, and uh, blessings to everybody. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us and we're gonna hop off and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye now.